en welkom back to Palace Zoo. Today we have some fun stuff, uh, lots of hedges again. And first you saw me uh, adding some green stuff there, because my mom always told me that was good for me. Okay, so I'm building an arrow here that points to the east. I think there isn't a compass in this game. Um, but what I'm really building is more area for people to walk. Why? Uh, ah, congestion. You see so many people here, it's getting dangerous. Okay. But I thought maybe some organic shaped paths would help this very square uh, park at the moment. Well, it will be kind of square uh, for a long time, but yeah. Okay, new animal today. Tapirs. And tapirs uh, originate from South Africa, America, I mean shit, uh, yeah, uh, South America, like Latin America, I guess. And they don't like people, so what did they do? They planted a lot of trees around them, or maybe they lived near them, uh, something like that. But yeah, they don't live in large groups and they uh, are very solid, they live a very solid to the existence. Same, uh, same as me. Yeah, okay, that's sad. Um, building the same fence as the other things because we want to stick to the main theme in this core or center of the zoo. So, again, with back with the limestone and uh, yeah. Now, um, these animals are a bit different than our other animals in the zoo. Uh, because they need a lot of foliage in their habitat, um, and the other ones didn't like foliage at all. Uh, weird beasts, yeah. So, um, since they are living in a tropical environment normally, actually they can live in a temperate or grassland too, but they live in South America. So I needed to place South American foliage to please them. Because, of course, animals know exactly what kind of plants their ancestors were used to. Uh, that's how it works. But yeah, uh, since I didn't want to place like giant tropical forest trees, I went with a um, temperate set of trees and tried to match it a bit with the rest of the zoo so far. Because, well, these plants need to survive in this colder climate here too. So yeah, um, it's nice to change up the scenery a bit, right? So, okay. Um, same same tactic with the heart shelter this time we're building a roof roof over the bedding and more copper roofs because who doesn't like color greenish okay yeah I did some more theming on the theme of the zoo of the direction I want to go in and last episode I talked about maybe make some region areas and I'm gonna do that so this is of course South America. The camels are Asian. No. Oh no, I messed it up. No, wait. Yeah, okay, so camels are like South Africa or Africa in general. And then the peafowls. Oh, spoiler. Okay, that's a spoiler for next episode. But the peafowls are for uh, India. This is South America. And then the. The, 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 the creative flamingos are for the mundane European wolves and stuff, uh, animals. So, so, maybe North America, like the grizzly bears. Because, well, flamingos live nearly anywhere. Um, except for North America. Uh, oh. Well, we'll figure something out. But yeah, uh, just adding some details on this building. Um... Individually, they look pretty, uh, uh, yeah, pretty mundane, the buildings, but together with the foliage around them, it paints a nice picture. And since I'm not gonna spend 80 hours on one building, even though that might look very good, uh, I want to expand the zoo at a reasonable pace. Oh, yeah, we're done with that building, uh, yes. Um, so, I talked about the little side project I wanted in this area, and it's gonna be a hedge maze. Oh, with hedges, yes, lots of hedges this time, um, square hedges and round hedges and green ones and uh, brown, no, only green ones actually, yeah, 
But yeah, uh, I actually, uh, when you're seeing this, you think, wow, how did he came up with that pattern? That's really clever. This guy must be pretty clever. Now, Google Images is back at it again. Uh, I uh, copied the pattern. Yeah, from, in from the internet, because making a maze yourself, who does that? That's weird. Um, maybe it isn't, I don't know, I'm not a cultured man. Um, but yeah, I had actually fun copying this, because it was simple. Uh, only thing I needed to figure out is the spacing between the paths and the edges, and the size of the general grid. Uh, so, yeah. And there's like a little sanctuary. Uh, part in the middle where you can do your secret stuff and come to peace, uh, I guess. So yeah, Christmas is this week. Hi, uh, how exciting, right? I uh, love Christmas. I'm not going to do anything with Christmas for this YouTube channel. Um, but Frontier is doing like a Arctic habitat contest and I might compete in that uh, yeah I, I have a little fun idea for uh, cool arctic stuff um, and I bought the DLC I haven't used any of it yet so I might as well get a bit more familiar with it when building that uh, habitat I'm not gonna tell you what it is because then people are gonna steal my idea even though it's not original at all but uh, yeah uh, it's not a Santa's workshop or a Santa house or anything Christmas related because it's Arctic and not necessarily Christmas. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Really fun and finished here with the uh, maze. I actually needed to move it a bit more outwards because the paths became too narrow and then I can't fit any through it anymore. Uh, and bigger people and uh, yeah, it's gonna be an issue. Uh, so I fixed that. Here, boom. Yeah, I wish they could make me smaller like that too, but okay, some more hedges, yeah, well, what should I say, it, it's pretty straightforward. Now you can actually play or like explore this maze yourself when I upload the park to the workshop in the far future, 2035 something, and uh, it actually, well, it works, if you, if you use Tadget Cam, it's pretty cool. I actually get lost in there for hours and then um, yeah I don't know sad existence but uh, yeah it's fun it's a cool actually I might just upload the maze itself uh, by uh, by itself because it's a fun concept to make little games inside this game maybe like a puzzle you need to make with buildings or something I've uh, thought about doing that but it's a lot of work for something I don't really uh, like enjoy doing so <laughs> maybe someone else will do it so here in the center I made a fountain another lion head because it looks cool and we don't have any other animals of that size in limestone the texture yeah so some decorations uh, this one I uh, designed all by myself oh, um, yeah some pet on the ground and to follow the rays of the sun yeah um, little entrance arch here there's actually two entrances to this not an exit and an exit or an entrance and an exit well I guess they are both an exit and an entrance but yeah I don't know what the goal is of the maze to reach the center or to reach the exit uh, yeah, it's fine it's fine. So a little toilet, a restroom building here, because people need to relieve themselves uh, in these parks. And what I don't like about like the building of a toilet it is that it's four meters high. Even though uh, four meters is quite tall, uh, in my experience. So I wish they would have made it a bit smaller. But yeah, anyway. Uh, very simple style. I used the, the, the brown brick again. Because, well, limestone is expensive and it's a toilet building. I don't want to stain the walls. Uh, um, yeah. Little uh, slanted roof on top to have it a bit more personality. Uh, personality. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna skip. Uh, just gonna skip this building. Uh, building. Oh, boom. It's done. 
wow i should do that more often <laughs> okay so i'm using these pink flowers now a lot and i like them so i'm gonna use them more because that's how that works uh, i guess so uh yeah finishing off the fence i didn't finish in uh, episode three we need to finish our loose ends you know like the mob does well maybe not as aggressive but yeah uh just base placing some poly poles sticky sticks lamp lampy lights lamp li yeah exit signs wow that's in the rhymes okay um so here i made a little education platform that sounds weird uh, it's a little well a platform with like conservation boards on there uh yeah i don't like this i'm gonna probably delete this later it kind of fills the square with something uh i could build something elsewhere um somewhere else some else so somewhere else okay but then again i mean then i build another maze because i had square one but some people prefer circles so i'm catering to everyone and this circle is uh, round yeah um again i copied this from the internet uh, this was a bit more tricky to do though because uh, you're building things at an angle um and yeah it doesn't isn't perfect uh, well i'm happy with it but i mean real life hedges aren't perfect either uh yeah don't hedge shame me okay now uh don't you guys think this is amazing Amazing, <laughs> get it? Uh, um, I think it is. Um, yeah, so it's like a clock, this or an orange that is green. Okay, now I've uh, I've been thinking about how to do my episodes for this series, and what I'm doing now is I make a animal habitat first. And then I make something else not animal related, like a hedge maze, or a parking lot, uh, for example, or like a hill, or a street, or a staff facilities building, or like a greenhouse, stuff like that. And then build a habitat, like we have two aspects each episode, and that keeps it interesting and it keeps also the pace in the series, because I don't want, uh, I could like release a 10 minute episode every day with a small build. Um, or do this, like, spend a bit more effort on it, and so that I actually have something to show that, uh, that, that works and I'm proud of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just let, let me think if you think that's a good idea to do an animal habitat and something else in one episode. And I like, keep them around, like, maximum of 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. More flowers, these pink ones again, and then I thought, oh... I might as well use another color. I used yellow in a bit, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, because one flower alone is not uh, enough. Uh, oh, here's the yellow, whoa. So, I thought it meant, like mixed well with the area, and then I thought as well, as well uh, might uh, make a little more gardeny stuff next to the maze, because uh, the, well, the maze is so, I, I, I would say like manufactured or planned. I can't just have like the wild forest like uh, right next to it. I uh, actually I can. Yeah, I, I mean uh, I just want to, to give a bit of air feel to this area. So yeah, I also changed the path from like the gravel here to the tree bark path, and the tree bark path actually mixes really well with the dark soil cover. I made a little path here. See, you almost can't see it now. I mean, I could have used the natural path, but you see those weird uh, poles, poly poles to the side of the path, and that just offsets me a bit. So, um, yeah, finishing off that garden area here, and then I'm uh, actually gonna place nature next to it because uh, I want to feel everything outside the zoo should feel a bit like a nature park. Um, not everything is manicured. Uh, exactly because that's way too expensive and it's also kind of boring um, so this is the first taste of what the nature stuff might look like uh, in the next episode I've also made a little forestry area 
um, between the parking lot and this area um, to yeah, liven it up a bit because now with the pathing structure I made it feels like I'm filling up boxes a bit that's exactly one I want to avoid for the rest of the of the zoo and the general area but I mean if you look at Schönbrunn it's really very particular straight paths and diagonal paths but not all, not really like curved paths of stuff yeah but anyways that's it so uh, bye <laughs>